What's good everyone? It's Smudger here and season two has just dropped. So we're really quickly going to cover the quickest way to kind of level up through that battle pass, get all those tiers unlocked, unlock the new weapons, unlock the new skins. And I'm going to split this, I guess, into general points multiplayer and warzone. Obviously I know not everyone plays multiplayer, not everyone plays warzone. And I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below so you can just kind of flick over to whatever you're interested in. So we're just going to get into this straight away, I'm not going to hang about. If we start with the general points, um, the first one is make sure you're utilising double XP, double weapon XP. You know, I see so many people just collecting the tokens and then not using them, which seems counterproductive. So just make sure, you know, you've always got one of them running because the way the battle pass works, um, I'll quickly cover this, is a thousand XP is 1% um, and a minute of game time is 1%. So like... It seems like it's going to take forever, but they run concurrently, and if you kind of farm XP as best you can, it does go up relatively quickly. And there is, of course, one overarching method that works the best that I'll cover right at the end, so make sure you stick around for that. So if we continue with kind of general points, this works for both Warzone and Cold War. Make sure that you're switching between operators. Obviously in Warzone you can just hit the random button, and it'll give you a new operator every game, pretty much. And this is because you'll find yourself completing challenges without really realising that you're doing so. And um, that's a massive benefit because it's free XP, you know, you don't have to think about it. There's no kind of real grind there to get that XP. And similarly for weapons, make sure you're kind of switching up your weapons and what you're using. Obviously I know it's a bit harder in Warzone because, you know, you want to use the strongest weapons that you can. But I'd recommend at least trying to kind of switch between the strongest weapons. Maybe you favour a certain weapon like the FFAR, maybe, you know, go use a different gun for a bit, you go back to the MP5, use the Cold War MP5, just because if you unlock those lower tier, I guess we could call them, lower tier um, challenges, it's far, far easier. And obviously in Cold War, make sure you're switching through the guns as best you can. And so if we actually move on to the multiplayer experience, particularly within Cold War, obviously. Make sure you are rocking Nuketown 24-7 as much as you can. It's the easiest way to get XP, it's the easiest way to rack up XP. Um, obviously, it's the most popular playlist by far in there. And I'd really, really recommend it if you're just kind of looking to play a few casual matches but still want to make some decent progress towards the tiers. Obviously, there's no such thing as casual matches in Call of Duty anymore, but as casual as you can want. Um, you know, there's no real pressure to play the objective in these modes. People are only there to level up guns, which I get. And if there's like an express 24-7 comes back, then obviously you're, you're going to be able to rock that um, and have a lot of fun in that as well. So any of those 24-7 game modes are the best. But just because they're not the most objective based doesn't mean that you shouldn't play the objective. Now, I may be biased because I love to play the objective, but it's a really easy way to rack up XP, just like, you know, like, sit in a hard point for a few seconds and you're going to rack up some XP, capture a flag and domination, like, simple things, like, they're not game-breaking things, you don't have to sweat super, super hard to try and get the win, um, but it works. And that leads me on to the next part, is even if you are losing, stay in the match. Even if you're having one of those games where the team again, you're playing against is called in, like, four different attack helicopters just stay in the game chill out you know just accept the defeat um try to limit damage to your kd because you get a massive boost of xp just for completing a game it rewards players for not rage quitting essentially um so it's worth it even if you do lose you do still get that boost of xp that's very very valuable in terms of it and then i guess next up within cold war is check out the challenges for the season so every season there's going to be kind of new challenges for people to complete. Some of them are super easy, you'll do them without really realising. But if you spend like, you know, 30 seconds just kind of scrolling through that, that challenge page, you'll see there's a ton there that you could do without putting a whole load of effort in. And it's, you know, it's a free 2,000 XP here, free 5,000 XP there. Like, they're not super difficult challenges in my opinion, or they're not usually. And so I definitely recommend making sure you're taking advantage of that in order just to gain a little bit more XP. And that's pretty much all there is for multiplayer. Obviously, you know, all the general tips apply. A lot of it is just playtime, and because the games are significantly shorter than Warzone games, you don't benefit from that kind of one minute is 1% of the battle pass tier. So you have to play a lot more games to feel like you're progressing, but the games are shorter, so, you know, it's, it's a balancing act, I guess. If you don't like Warzone, you're not going to play it, so it's not really important to you. Just something to look out for. 
you're not going to be racking up as much XP in Cold War as a general rule as you would be in Warzone. And so if we do go over to the Warzone side, um, obviously Warzone, super long games, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. So that's 20 to 30% of a battle pass tier in theory. Obviously some games are going to be far, far shorter. But also the actual XP you gain in-game is far, far greater. You know, you get XP for looting, you get XP for completing contracts, for picking contracts up. As well as kind of the kills and the placement finishes. And so those are the big things to take away is that even if maybe you don't have as many wins as you'd like, you know, you're not dropping mad 20 plus kills every game it doesn't matter just make sure you know you're losing you know you've got that double xp on um, and you're getting into engagements and winning them so even if you do only kind of come out in the top 10 with five or six kills that's a hell of a lot more xp when you combine the placement with it than if you were being you know super aggressive and you go down with six kills by the second circle um and i'm not endorsing camping whatsoever um but you know play your game um, you know, you do you, but placement gives you a massive boost of XP, finishing the game um, and not rage quitting gives you a massive boost of XP, so, you know, try and hold off going and just switching off your console or your, your PC the moment you know you're going to die, like I've seen some people do, there's just no point, get that XP boost and just move on. And this kind of moves me on to the very, very big point that I know a lot of people brought up, I've brought up before, and that is the best way to tear up and to level up is plunder. I think a lot of people are starting to catch on to this now, but I still know a few people aren't. Um, plunder is by far the easiest game mode to just farm XP. You just do contract after contract, supply run contracts are fantastic. Um, they're great for leveling up weapons as well, as I'm sure a lot of people know now. And the sheer amount of XP you get from looting, um, from contracts, from finishing the game. You don't even have to kill anyone. Obviously, you're going to get XP from that as well. But the sheer amount of XP you will get from a plunder game is unmatched. Um, and I don't think there's any any kind of fix for that at the moment. Not fix, but like kind of competitor. Obviously, people are going to play the zombies game mode, which I haven't covered in this on purpose, purely because I don't know anything about zombies. So I'm not going to, you know, speak on something that I don't know a lot about. Um, but plunder is by far the best way to do it. And I just, I can't think of a better way to kind of get around that unless there is an XP glitch that I'm not aware of. That is going to be the easiest way to get through that battle pass as quickly as, can, as you can. Obviously, the downside is that it's pretty boring to play. Um, you know, you don't want to be playing it for all 100 tiers of the battle pass, you're better off just playing your game and making sure, you know, you're keeping note of the challenges you're completing. If you've got an XP token on, you know, those basic stuff so you can keep playing your game and level up just that little bit faster would be my advice. Obviously, if you do want to maybe unlock one of the weapons because they've just added the Galil, like, properly, um, you might run plunder for a bit just to make sure you get up there. That's understandable. I wouldn't recommend playing plunder for all 100 tiers that would really start to drag on after a little bit and that really is all that is to it as always i hope you enjoyed the video if you did find something useful make sure to give it a like subscribe if you want to find your way back i hope you all have a good day and i'll see you next time bye